Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we discuss the astrological influences from September 18th until September 25th. As we are now in eclipse season, what a ride we are on. And the week ahead actually promises some beautiful gold as well as solid developments that are taking us higher and elevating us. We're going to be experiencing an extended and very rare kite formation where an earth grand trine is being created for a week with the sun in Virgo followed by Mercury in Virgo and all of the energy continues to focus on that Neptune in Pisces, which is the liftoff point to other realms, spiritual gifts, trusting ourselves more, faith in the unseen, expanded creative potentials, and so much more. I'll be discussing it more specifically in today's show, of course. But we are in this otherworldly realm that we haven't experienced before. You could feel like you're walking around guided by your crown chakra, that you're more tuned in to your higher self, your bigger, expansive, timeless energy field of soul wisdom. You could feel detached, like your feet are floating above the ground. Your energy body is levitating a little bit higher. Perhaps you're feeling guided by new levels of trust, compassion, peace, forgiveness, or even that's what you want to call in. That's what you would like to be experiencing now. So this is a significant week of energies that you'll be tapping into in whichever way and form is best for your energy. And so I'm going to dive into that more here in just a moment. Just a quick programming note that there was no Monday podcast. So I did not release an episode on September 16th because I gave myself a Pisces break. I took a break. I've been creating a lot of content for you. Obviously, there's no shortage of videos and astrology information I've been sharing and producing for you. So I gave myself a break from the podcast on Monday, which I'm not going to lie, it felt good and was in alignment with the energies. And then at the end of this podcast, I do want to touch on some recent developments in the entertainment industry, as well as share a personal message of gratitude. So let's talk a bit more about this Pisces lunar eclipse, because this is going to have powerful influences into April and May 2025, especially. Every eclipse actually has a ranking. It's ranked in terms of power based on when the transiting planets come through and activate it. The most powerful activating planets are the Sun and Mars. However, Jupiter is influential since it expands the energy point of an eclipse. And the outer planets are a big deal when they come through and specifically work on a degree point of an eclipse. So with this particular Pisces lunar eclipse that was at 25 degrees, 41 minutes of Pisces, we round up to 26 degrees of Pisces, and we're going to see the North Node in Pisces come through this same area of your chart in April and May of 2025. So the energies that are starting now, that are coming up for your conscious awareness. These are energies that have been in your subconscious and your unconscious. Now they're coming forward stronger, appearing in dreams, meditations, being gifted to you through intuitive downloads, spiritual messages, unexpected knowingness. I feel like many, many people are going to have these awakenings of their clairs, where you could feel more claircognizant, more clairvoyant. You could suddenly feel like you see, you know, you understand things in a way you can't explain it. You just know it, you feel it, you get it. So our energetic awareness is being heightened and elevated. 
And this will be a part of your spiritual work and assignment over the next seven to eight months. And it's an area of yourself that you're growing into. With that North Node in Pisces coming through to activate the Pisces lunar eclipse, there's going to be more for you to up level and to trust in yourself. And this is quite personal. This is your own personal spiritual growth that you're dealing with. And these are meant to be parts of your energy that you deeply honor. You hold it as sacred. You understand these are downloads and gifts that you've been working on that honor your own ascension journey and support how you're here to navigate the physical world with greater discernment and knowingness. And so opening up to these new spiritual gifts can cause confusion and doubt. You can absolutely doubt it because it requires a trust that perhaps you've never had to practice before. And keep in mind that with these spiritual gifts, you will see and feel and sense it before there's evidence, before it's real. And that can require you holding something close to your chest where I'm just going to trust this. I'm just going to see what happens. I'm going to believe in this even if others don't or even if there is no physical evidence yet. So keep in mind that is part of how we develop muscles with our spiritual gifts is that we have to continually work at them and trust them and then we see the energy play out in the physical world. So whichever house you have 25 and 26 degrees of Pisces in in your chart is the area of life that your spiritual gifts are showing up. And so this could be any house, the fourth house, sixth house, 11th house. It can be any house in your chart where you are opening up to applying, receiving, and understanding more about your life through the Pisces realms of intuition. There's also the energy of dissolving, lessening, and letting go. And so you could also feel that you have less focus, less energy, less control in these parts of your world too. And that's because the Pisces influence is about letting go in order to ride out these bigger waves, the ebbs and flows of life, what is outside of our control, our perceived control, but allowing that to be wonderful ways of trusting ourselves and the bigger cycles that are unfolding on the planet. So the Pisces areas of your chart are where you're learning to step back and to not try to overexert control or manage what you actually cannot manage because the energies are much bigger, but you can fine tune your connection to spirit and allow that to be something that you work with. I also wanted to highlight some bigger Pisces and Neptunian themes that the world is going to be moving through now. And they're going to be energies that we feel and experience on a grander scale. And we're going to have more of these energies come to light. They include embezzling, deceptions, blackmail, chemicals, oil, addicts, flooding, the ocean, bigger weather systems, treason, collapse, drownings. Neptune and Pisces also rules alcohol, drugs, poisons, hospitals, asylums, nursing homes, prisons, welfare, refugees, The entertainment industry is ruled by Neptune and Pisces and is even stronger at this time with Saturn in Pisces. So that brings up dance, actors, movies, film, music, creativity, inspiration, illusion, photography, painting. Pisces rules the feet. The bottom of your feet have the biggest pores on your body that absorb the most energy and also connect to all the organs and various systems in your body. So if you're familiar with reflexology, you know how there are different points on the bottom of your feet that would relate to, say, your liver, your kidneys, your eyes, your spine. That's all ruled by Pisces because Pisces is an accumulation of energies. 
there can be more dissolving, more collapses, uh, more things disappearing with this energy. And there can be more openings into higher realms where we are being guided to stay protective of our energies. Because as the astral expands, so can all kinds of energetics, entities, forms, and consciousness also expand. So there is a very important requirement for energetic responsibility and protection, making sure that you're aware of how your energy is in a beautiful aura of protective light, that you are consciously aware of what you're allowing into your energy, into your personal auric space, and declaring regularly that only the highest vibrating light energies and intentions are allowed into your space. So this is going to be important because part of our ascension is becoming greater masters of energy. And that means greater responsibility on a regular daily basis. Now, this is the first Pisces eclipse we've had since 2016. So consider how much you've spiritually grown and evolved since 2016. Apply that mastery. Use your tools. Understand that what you declare with your sovereign power matters in the universe and be in that place of empowerment here with what you've come to understand about how your energy connects, especially with the universe at large. Now, thankfully, we have a beautiful ongoing earth grand trine unfolding until September 25th. This is rare that we would have such a lineup of energy circling in the earth grand trine space. So let me break that down for you. An earth grand trine is when we have planets in all three of the earth signs. And at this time, we have Pluto retrograde in Capricorn at 29 degrees. We have Uranus retrograde in Taurus at 27 degrees. And now we have the sun in Virgo creating that earth grand trine and connecting three areas of your chart that are now talking to each other through this ongoing circuit of energy. A grand trine is actually a triangle, but that's boring. So let's make it sound sexier. It's an earth grand trine. And this energy is stabilizing and connecting three areas of your chart that are on a similar frequency of change, awakening, life path direction. This energy is asking you to be practical, solid, industrious, powerful, and to assert your boundaries. This earth grand trine is connecting parts of your life that are syncing up in a whole new way to transform your physical environments, your daily experiences, perhaps your body, your health, your everyday work routines, taking you further into a new reality that you can actually work with. Now, the earth signs are not only practical, they're evidence-based. They're show me. Show me how this is going to work. Show me what to do here. I need to see that this is real. I'm not interested in simply what you're feeling and what you're saying. I need to see it in tangible form. This is a week where those solutions, next steps, ideas, projects, visions, and ideas can come to life and take shape in a very physical manner. The sun in Virgo is shining a light on the practical next steps, the how, the process, the linear way that what you would want to recreate in your life can show up and actually work. And with the influence of both Pluto and Uranus here, this is change, but it's empowered change. It's a powerful transformation that maybe you've been feeling and you're 
sitting with and considering. This is something that you're opening up to. And because both Pluto and Uranus are retrograde, it is internal. It could be private where you're not sharing everything that you're considering with others, but you're internally manifesting it. And as the sun comes through here and shines that warmth of consciousness and light on that internal process, there's energy here that gets legs, like it takes shape and it takes form so you can work with it in a solid way. The earth signs are slow moving. They take things step by step. It's like trusting the terrain. You're trusting that this step is on a solid path before you take the next step. But once that momentum is there, the energy picks up. And that could be the case this week, that there is some type of momentum that comes in. Because with a grand trine, the energy is also what's called a closed circuit. And this is something that one of my mentors, Noel Till, discussed at length. And he was actually one of the first astrologers to propose this. And it caused quite a flurry when he did. But the grand trine is a closed circuit of energy that doesn't look for or need external support or validation. It's an internal strengthening process here. Because it's a closed circuit, It keeps moving. The energy keeps moving from one earth sign to another. Think of a pinball machine that just keeps going or another form of energy that is self-sustaining. This is a self-sustaining energy here with the earth grand trine working with two outer planets signifying influential long-term change that is ready for your awareness, ready for your consciousness, which is what happens when the sun enters the conversation. And that occurred as the Pisces lunar eclipse became full and illuminated something in your unconscious and it beamed that energy down to the sun in Virgo about making a life change, a routine change, something shifting in your body, in your physical self, perhaps feeling discontent or sensing that you want more, you want something different. And that is your own subconscious speaking to you around the changes that you're ready to make, ready or not. And this energy is now being applied in the physical world. So on September 19th, the sun in Virgo trines Uranus retrograde in Taurus at 27 degrees. The next day on September 20th, the sun in Virgo opposes Neptune retrograde in Pisces at 28 degrees. Then the following day on September 21st, the sun in Virgo trines Pluto retrograde in Capricorn at 29 degrees. So what is happening here is that right after that Pisces lunar eclipse brought something up for you to understand that maybe was uncomfortable, caught you off guard, a bigger dream, a bigger life vision, something expansive that felt unreal, impossible. How could this happen or how could this really come together? The Pisces lunar eclipse takes us into new streams of higher consciousness that we haven't met before. And now the energy returns to earth and brings in more pieces to work with, new ways of understanding it. And that sun in Virgo is very active here until September 21st, right until that Libra equinox, connecting with all three outer planets and asking us to think bigger about our daily reality. Your daily life experiences can be more They can be more fulfilling, more expansive, more satisfying, more fulfilling. Have you allowed yourself to go there? Have you allowed yourself to step outside of your current daily reality to look at what would lift you up? What would be better for you? What would feed your soul on a regular basis? Where could you add more ease, joy, and effortlessness into your daily life? 
What would take you out of the daily grind if it's grinding you down or has become too overwhelming or too much? How can you evolve your concept of work to better resonate with your natural energetic signature? How can you shift your own awareness into possibilities that maybe you didn't allow yourself to consider or grasp because they seemed too ridiculous, they seemed too big, they seemed too unrealistic. This energy is inviting you to evolve your own limitations and to co-create with the universe in a higher form. And now I'm intuitively being called to the influence of the Industrial Revolution, which actually had many waves and is associated with different time periods in history. In the most basic description, the Industrial Revolution is when we had machines that could perform faster, more convenient, more economical solutions than simply using our hands. And so we had many scientific breakthroughs, new machines brought into the workplace, factories grew and expanded, new solutions opened up. And of course, all of this changed what it meant to work, what it meant to perform one's duties. Following that, we had the revolution led by technology, which included the digital revolution that led to the information and knowledge revolutions. And these are important because these are influential cultural expectations of work. But when we have this Pluto retrograde in Capricorn trining, Uranus retrograde in Taurus, they're apart by only two degrees. It signifies the revolution in how we perform our professional duties, our daily work habits, and how we make money is drastically changing. That's been underway, but it's going to expand and accelerate, especially in the second half of this decade. So we are moving through this terrain of opening up to what it means to use our energy on a daily basis that is in alignment with our own energetic design. This also directly relates to your human design energy signature as well as your astrology chart and how you are here to share your authentic gifts in the world. So taking all of this together, understanding that this Pisces lunar eclipse is meant to expand you into new realms and that you bring those realms down into your physical reality, there's going to be some openings here into life changes you could not have foreseen. Again, especially into April, May 2025, and this relates to your career, health, daily life, how you make money, what you are dedicated to, your professional world, your daily habits, creative ventures, lifestyle changes, and on and on it goes. I hope and I intend that this means that more people are moving into their dream jobs, moving into the professional work that really satisfies them, that gives them the life that they want and they love and allows them to make those changes in concrete, practical ways. That is one very powerful energy signature here where people might have some downloads around a new life dream and what that looks like, what that really looks like. So if this resonates with you, not only hold that intention, but ask for that assistance and guidance. Become curious and inquisitive. Gather information and details around what is possible for you and give it time. Be realistic in your planning here. But that is one way that this energy is opening us up to moving into new realities that better support us. Now, following the sun in Virgo, we have Mercury in Virgo interacting with five outer planets this week, starting with the opposition to Saturn retrograde in Pisces at 15 degrees on September 18th. This can feel like a standstill, an energy of contemplation, reflection, getting quiet. This can be observing 
There's also a reality check here that comes into play. Then Mercury squares Jupiter in Gemini on September 21st. The square from Jupiter in Gemini at 20 degrees is expansive, but perhaps too many ideas at once, too much to consider to the point of overwhelm, and many options that might be interesting, but not exactly possible. Then Mercury moves on to trine Uranus retrograde in Taurus at 27 degrees. This happens on September 24th. Then on September 25th, Mercury opposes Neptune in Pisces retrograde at 28 degrees and trines Pluto retrograde in Capricorn at 29 degrees. So there's a very active Mercury over this next week that is bringing together more information to assess and discern what is applicable and practical. And sometimes this Mercury in Virgo doesn't see the full picture right away. In fact, Mercury in Virgo is not meant to. It's meant to collect the details and specifics. Mercury is on a mission here to gather intel and understand what can work and what can be pieced together. So all of this plays into the Earth Grand Trine energies that are forming a new reality and also creating the ongoing kite configuration, which has Neptune and Pisces as the liftoff point. And that was the Pisces lunar eclipse. So new dreams are possible. A new version of life is possible here. It starts with the dream and then it comes down into reality and the universe wants to support you in some manner with those details. The universe wants to bring together your next version of reality, whatever that might be for you, whatever lifts you up, whatever's practical for you as well, because it's different for each of us. But there's a lot of promise here around what can manifest, especially if it's been happening behind the scenes. And if it's something that you've been holding as a dream, And I know this sounds wildly optimistic. And for some of you, you're going to say, Molly, it's too optimistic. I don't see how this is possible. Well, there you go. Then it won't happen for you. It won't come together if you're going to shoot it down or be negative and not believe or not think that something can show up for you to take you further or take you higher. We each create our reality. You are co-creating with the universe all the time, especially through your thoughts. So if you're willing to think a bit higher, to trust a bit more, to believe in something that is possible for you. That is how you manifest in this reality and you are in charge of it. And that's also why some people only get so far in their manifesting abilities because they don't put their 100% into it. They don't actually believe it can happen. And this is where your belief systems are foundational in your manifestation abilities. If you don't truly believe, then that will stop you at the door every time. So with the earth sign influence, responsibility is key. And it's taking responsibility for any of your own self-limitations, for any of your own energies that are weakening your power or weakening your manifestation abilities. And that's beyond what I can get into in today's episode. But know that part of this Pisces lunar eclipse influence is taking you through where you've had unconscious weaknesses and limitations. And the universe is gifting you with new eyesight to see it clearly and to understand that you can change it. Now, the other side of this energy is that it's happening ready or not. We are moving into big new chapters on this planet. And it's interesting because we're going to look back on some of our current experiences of this reality and see these as the good old days that we don't always understand how we have it good or what we have because we take it for granted. We don't recognize it. We just assume it's part of the status quo and it's going to last forever, but nothing lasts forever. 
And we are moving into new experiences of reality. That means we're leaving behind current experiences of reality. And we're not going to know what those are, perhaps, until time has moved on and we see it in hindsight. So it's a beautiful time to feel gratitude for what you do have right now. Even if it seems ridiculous or minor, just acknowledge what you have that is supporting you, that is working for you, that is beneficial in your life and in your world. Just the simple gratitude for what you've created and manifested so far, it means something And what we focus on is what grows. So where we have gratitude for something, we expand into more energies of gratitude. Big parts of our world are going to be ending and falling away. And I don't want that to sound drastic or overly dramatic, but we're already in that energy. It's already happening. And there are going to be things that we move into that will be more dynamic and exciting and perhaps a better fit. And then we'll look back and realize that played an important role. That was a stepping stone. That was a rung on the ladder. So it is a beautiful time to appreciate each rung on the ladder all the steps that got you to today and to what you've accumulated along the way. We always have something to be grateful for. And in fact, that list can be never ending the more you focus on it. I was on a trip a few weeks ago to Los Angeles and I was traveling with three people. So there were four of us all traveling together and we each were very different in our expectations, our experiences, etc., etc. But even when you approach those differences from an open-hearted place of understanding and acceptance, it creates a beautiful synergy, a beautiful sense of acknowledging what each being brings to the table from your heart space instead of approaching it from the mental place of expectation or the egoic stance of shoulds. There can be more open energy here where we understand that our ability to flow with life happens on a daily basis, happens through the day-to-day interactions with others, and of course also happens through our intention to be in that place of open-heartedness. Now all of these energies surround the Libra Equinox portal which is on September 22nd. The sun will enter Libra at 8.44 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is where we move into the second half of the Zodiac calendar. It's also a point of equilibrium. The equinox happens twice a year, and it's when we are meant to balance ourselves. This is when a balance between daytime and nighttime an energetic reset of balancing forces and a time to graciously acknowledge where we are out of balance, where we need to bring ourselves into greater equilibrium for not only our best and highest good, but to honor what our energy needs. If you've been thinking too much, if your mind has been on overdrive, then perhaps you need to balance that by moving into the body, doing something that allows you to organically move without relying upon the mind steering the course all the time. So this is a good week to look at where you've been overactive in various expressions and how you can set the intention to bring yourself to a reset point that honors where you've been underperforming, perhaps, or disconnected from a part of your energy. If you feel like you've been too much in your masculine expressions, you could realize that you need to drop into more of your feminine expressions or vice versa. So that is one of the guiding intentions here of the Libra Equinox portal is that we can work with our energy systems to bring them into a truer state of wholeness. Now on the same day that the sun enters Libra, Venus is active with a square to Pluto retrograde in Capricorn at 29 degrees. Venus is in Libra, which is one of the astrology signs that she rules. And yet she has this final square to Pluto 
And Pluto in Capricorn is giving her a message that not everything is meant to be fair, to not give away her power in the name of maintaining peace, to not diminish her own needs and sense of self for others' expectations or what they think she should do. When Venus squares Pluto, there can be this deeper discomfort around something you know is not working. It's not working because it's not in alignment with what you really need to take a stand on. And Pluto in Capricorn is executive order. It's understanding that sometimes you don't make a decision that makes everyone happy. You make a decision because it's what's required to get the job done, to move something forward, or to be most effective. Venus squaring Pluto can bring up power dynamics in relationships, where even if it's been out of sight, out of mind, now it comes front and center. But I feel what's fascinating here is that this is a final hurrah for Venus and Libra, because this is the last time she's ever going to square Pluto and Capricorn. And there's something about a grand completion here that I feel this Pluto and Capricorn is testing Venus and saying, what did you learn here about what's truly going on in relationships? What have you come to understand about your own unconscious patterns or fears? And I feel this Pluto is testing Venus so that she really gets the message around something. And then she enters Scorpio right after this square to Pluto and Capricorn. And as Venus moves into Scorpio, she really digs into her truth to the parts of herself that maybe she pushed away or she hid. She didn't know how to deal with all the emotion or intensity around it. And she feels herself becoming more powerful as if a previous version of herself is truly over, has truly been dismantled and no longer exists. Her previous version of consciousness no longer permeates her experiences. And so this Venus is rising into a new version of herself that I think she's been working on for a very long time. Because of these ongoing squares she's had to Pluto and Capricorn since 2009. And I'm seeing her become like this new version of a superhero. I'm seeing her stepping in to a new part of herself that maybe she was afraid to claim or assert or understand. There is a deeper Venus journey that is unfolding during this Libra Equinox portal. And perhaps you're sensing it around anything that Venus rules, which could include money. Maybe a part of you is ready to take, maybe you are really powering up your energetic connection to finances and money and your self-value and your self-worth. And you've had to dig deep to look at your own patterns around that. And if it was inherited from your parents or if it was something that was limiting you and you weren't aware of it, So these energies run deep, but there's something beautifully powerful here that Venus is going to move through during Libra season and is going to be accentuated during the Libra solar eclipse, which happens at 10 degrees of Libra on October 2nd. So Venus has a no going back energy as we move into Libra season, and this opens up many new potentials in Libra season, as well as the Libra areas of your chart. And I'll touch more on the Libra energies in next Wednesday's show. So all in all, we have some deeply influential energies this week. There is a lot happening, and it could feel like you're just moving through each day and not a lot is shifting, but there is a lot changing in the cosmos and in the collective, and you're absolutely in tune with what is meant to shift for you. So trust that. Trust what's coming through, what's whispering at you, what's nudging you to do something different, because that is absolutely the theme, and those energies are going to pick up 
as we approach the second eclipse on October 2nd. And I will have a video on YouTube discussing that October 2nd Libra solar eclipse for you shortly. I wanted to give you a heads up that if you are feeling inspired to write a book and to trust your own creative process, especially as it relates to your spiritual journey, a writing master class is coming back around again. I did speak about this. I think it was last year was the first time that Hillary Smith taught this course, but it was so well reviewed and so many people loved it that it is being offered again. It's called Words That Teach, Words That Heal, Secrets of Self-Help and Spirituality Writing. It's a live four-week course that helps you develop a path for a book. You will find your voice as an author, learn how to incorporate research exercises, offer great anecdotes and thoughts, give your information wider applicability, and so much more. Hillary is an excellent editor. I have worked with her personally and really enjoy her professionalism, her insights, her wisdom, and I trust her. So I wanted to let you know that this is a live class and replays will be available. But if you would like to become a spiritual or self-help author, this is a great place to start, as well as a great place to refine your own writing. I will put the link below the podcast if you want to check out more details. It does start in October. I mentioned earlier how Pisces rules the entertainment industry. And on September 16th, there was the arrest of Sean P. Diddy Combs, that you have probably heard about. And something that I wanted to highlight or just remind you and remind us about this time on the planet is that energies are accelerating and the light is coming in quickly to the darkest corners of our world. But sometimes even that doesn't seem fast enough and that there can be times that you question if there's going to be justice, if things are going to be discovered, if there are parts of our current reality, are, is the truth ever going to come out? Is there ever going to be a true revelation of ABC or XYZ? And we have to keep in mind that we're working with so many different energetic timelines that what we perceive as fast or quick is different than the universal timeline. And to not give up hope in where the light is going to reveal more darkness and more injustices and untruths. Energy is clearest in the higher realms, and then it takes longer to get into the density of the 3D. And this is why it takes time. It takes years for true revelations to come about and show up. And so there are times to believe in the evidence of light, to believe that it's working, even if it's not on what we might perceive as the fastest timeline. There are so many components in place. There's so much swirling around that it's too hard to wrap our heads around it. But this is a time of deep revelations, of massive awakenings, and there will be more to come, especially in regards to this P. Diddy case where there's other fish in the sea and there's bigger fish that certainly don't want to be caught. But it's important to maintain faith in the light and that the universe is working with multiple forces and in multiple unseen ways to reveal what needs to be revealed right on time. And then finally, I want to say a sincere thank you for all of you who have offered your support from my podcast on divine feminine and toxic masculinity energies. Um, If you listen to that podcast, you'll also hear that I described it in those terms to paint a story, but it could be any roles. I mean, it could be divine feminine and toxic feminine. It could be divine masculine and toxic masculine, right? Like you could interchange those terms. But again, I want to thank you for those of you who have sent your support, your kind words, Um, I have received some beautiful messages from very unexpected, powerful people, and it's been both surprising and really touching. So thank you for that. 
But more importantly, I'm glad that this information is supporting so many of you who are moving through a similar theme, who are facing these energies with all you've got, but understanding the bigger picture of it all, how to stay connected to your choices and your power, how to work with universal energies, how to be trusting in what you're learning. Because sometimes it's as simple as acknowledging, this is my assignment right now. This is my assignment. This is what I've got to work with. This is what I've got to move through. I accept my assignment and I also accept when it's over, but I accept that this is where I am growing, healing, evolving, and this is where I'm going to master it and be an even stronger badass on the other side. And so that's the energy I send to each of you who deeply resonates with those themes because you would not have taken on this assignment unless you could truly handle it and unless it would benefit you. So for that alone, I know you've totally got this and I really believe that you're going to be beautifully rewarded on the other side of this soul assignment. So I guess not having a Monday podcast, I made up for it in today's show. As always, thank you so much for joining me. It's a delight to connect with you as always as we discuss the astrological energies. I look forward to connecting with you again on my next episode, wishing you a beautiful journey through this Libra Equinox portal and these very influential cosmic forces that are supporting us along the way. Have a beautiful week and I will see you back here soon.